Hello, honorable judges, and also honorable Mr. Nick. <laughs> Please let me start this debate with a kind of survey. Okay, let's say there is a student in a normal high school who is good at singing but fails at every exam he takes. And there is also a uh, demo for an English high school student uh, who is brilliant like Juicy. <laughs> well, please raise your raise your hands if you think that the student student attending a normal high school should learn more uh, later in life. Okay. <laughs> now I'm gonna explain why uh, the latter should earn more in in his life. The topic of this debate is whether entertainers are paid too much for their work they do. And our house agrees with this statement. The underlying issue is that some job, whether some jobs are more valuable than others and free market does not always, whether free market does not always determine a fair price and result. And uh, our house's burden to win this debate is to prove why entertainment, entertainment is actually less important than other subjects such as medical science and technology and moreover prove the market failure in entertainment. And as a first speaker, uh, uh, I will explain the lack of expertise uh, uh, required in entertainment and our second and third speaker will deal with the causes uh, the, with the factors that causes income inequality in the entertainment and the, and the fact that entertainers earn more than they actually deserve. So, uh, now I'm gonna give my argument that some jobs are actually more valuable than others if they require high expertise. <coughs> For instance, um, a construction worker cannot earn more than uh, than those people who are, who are doctors or lawyers who, uh, who have high expertise. Uh, even if the construction worker is skillful in this area, because uh, the basic difference of uh, knowledge and point of information. Yes. Isn't being isn't being skillful in one's area expertise? <laughs> isn't being skillful in one area, one's own area, isn't that expertise? Yes. <laughs> Order, please. <laughs> it is, uh, so then, my argument is, it is unfair to pay entertainment entertainers huge amount of money when those jobs do not uh, require uh, much more uh, much knowledge. Because uh, in order to uh, achieve such knowledge and information, people should people uh, most people in other areas should get long term education uh, through attending college or graduate school and have experience and uh, learn specified knowledge. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> that, that others don't have. While entertainers go through years of training, it is not mandatory for them to attend school and pursue further education. Singing, dancing, and acting acting uh, come mostly from talent that, that everyone is a, at least capable of. And to summarize the argument, on what's knowledge and expertise is an important factor deciding wage. Deciding wage. And since entertainment uh, does not require such things, uh, they do not deserve earning future amount of incomes. Thank you. Um,
actually, uh, they've got five and a half minutes, remember. It's the final speeches that are four minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> Sorry for a speaker. Okay, let's welcome Shihan, the first speaker for the outside. Okay, so I'm the first speaker of the opposition side. And this side of the house believes that entertainers are not paid too much for the work they do. And in order to win this debate, the first speaker, which is me, will prove that the value of the work decided is just due to the high demand at the equilibrium, and also that the value of work decided is due to the low supply at the equilibrium. And the second speaker, <laughs> Mr. Bay, will prove that, will explain how the value of work cannot be <laughs> determined on absolute terms. And the third speaker will summarize and explain why we won this debate. So the other side must prove that the absolute value can be placed on work and that they must also prove that this value is absolutely lower than that decided in the market. And our side's arguments are that one, the value of work is decided by the high demand <coughs> at equilibrium and two, the value of work is decided due to low supply at the equilibrium. And three, the value of work cannot be determined on absolute terms. And I'll begin by making some rebuttals. So Mr. Beck said that <laughs> entertainment doesn't need skills that are of high expertise, but expertise means that being also includes being skillful in one area and entertaining is can be a high, highly specialized skill because for example speaking in front of a large crowd needs a lot of practice and it is a hard skill to acquire and Mr. Beck also said that entertainment doesn't need much knowledge but entertaining needs a lot of knowledge on social skills and now I'll make our, I'll oh, prove our, yes. Uh, what are those social skills you mentioned that entertainers need? Like, they need to be, they need to learn how to interact with the crowd, and they need to be always aware of their, how the reactions of their surroundings are. Oh, uh, not now. <laughs> so, now we'll make our arguments, and I'll prove that the value of work is decided due to high demand at equilibrium and value of market is decided due to low supply at the equilibrium. <coughs> First, in the market there exists demand for celebrities and because people want this big name celebrities, the value of work done by them goes up as many management companies uh, compete to sign a contract with them. For example, many people are willing to pay high prices uh, to see Ray's concert and even at status quo where some are arguing against their high wages, thousands of people are in fact buying tickets to the race concert. And therefore the current price is the natural result of the market and distorting it would only cause inefficiency. Secondly, it must be noted that the value of work is decided due to the low, low supply at the equilibrium. Even though many people try out to become a famous actor and actresses, only a few actually succeed. Also, it is natural for the entertainers who came out of this competition as a winner to earn high wages by the market principles because they are only the minority. For example, Johnny Depp 
who has managed to win the prestigious Golden Globe Award earned $37 million in 2005. And thus, I have proved that the value of an occupation is naturally decided by the market. And by doing so, I have proved that the entertainers are not paid too much for the value of work they do. And that is why our house wins the debate. Our side of the house. Yeah, our side of the house. Thank you. Let's welcome Inha. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As the second speaker of the opposition team, I will first rebut some points uh, the opposition team has made and then present the second and third arguments of our team, um, which are that the uh, entertainers income incomes are too high considering their social role and intensity of their work and uh, entertainers impose some negative negative influence on the society uh, first i will give some uh, rebuttals to what the first speaker of the opposition team said uh, he said that the wages of, of people in different jobs are considered by the market, free market. Uh, but you have to say that free market itself does not determine a fair price. And there are several problems such as income inequality and that's why there are certain policies such as taxation and that's also a problem of free markets. So just because it's decided in the free market doesn't mean it's always right. Yes, yes. Doesn't the speaker agree that at the at the equilibrium that the consumer, the consumer satisfaction as well as the producer's satisfaction is ma is maximized and therefore is the most efficient level of production. <laughs> okay, it's, it's efficient, but efficient doesn't always mean it's uh, it's uh, appropriate. And there's like market failure. That market is always not perfect. And now we will move on to our. No, thank you, sir. Now we will move on to our team's uh, second and third arguments. The second argument is that the entertainers, uh, the uh, the wages of entertainers are too high for their considering their social role and their intensity of work. First, their social role is not strong enough to deserve such high wages that they, uh, most of the things that they do are to entertain uh, consumers by acting or singing and those entertainment works. And the, in, the intensity of their work isn't uh, intense enough and we can prove this by comparing the superstar superstars wages to non-famous entertainers wages which are uh, more than thousand times uh, thousand times different and the intensity of work that the superstars do and non-famous uh, entertainers do are not very different and 
the fact that they their wages so their wages are like a thousand times different is unfair. Yes, sir. How can you prove that, that how can you prove the difference in the intensity of work done by superstars and those that aren't? They, the acting, you can't like prove the exact amount of intensity, but the acting and singing can't be really uh, different. And, and, oh, and the, we'll move on to our third argument, which is that entertainers being paid too much have some negative influence upon our society. First, it does not, uh, it's not for all the, all, all the entertainers, but uh, some, some of the entertainers, um, their extravagancy has definitely negative influence in our society, it, especially to the adolescent like us who watch the entertainers and want to be like them. And also the income inequality between and also the uh, entertainers contribute a lot to the increasing gap of income inequality, which um, yeah, they contribute a lot to the income inequality for the two reasons I just gave to you. Uh, the entertainers are you should agree that entertainers are paid too much for the work they do. Thank you. <laughs> After the next speech, students, I'll be asking two of you to give speeches as well. Let's welcome Bei Jung. Good uh, afternoon, honorable judges. As the second speaker of the uh, of our side of the house, I will first rebut some of the arguments of the opposite side, and then move on to the third constructive point of our of our side. Uh, first, the second speaker of the opposite side, the proposition side, had pointed out that the market. I, she she pointed out market failure basically, but um, to this we say that well, people are still willing to pay for uh, these these forms of entertainment, and if if they're paying still paying that means that means that they they consider it worthwhile. So if they still consider it worthwhile, um, then isn't this not really a a failure at all? And if the market really and if the market really does fail, people will react and. When they do the market equilibrium, well, the market equilibrium will adjust itself to the optimum level. Um, and the second speaker also had said that uh, the work of entertainers isn't as intense as some other jobs that pay lower than um, this job. But uh, I, well, thank you. I'd like to ask. Um, isn't acting, singing, and running on fields also work? And what about the things that they have to sacrifice? Entertainers. Okay. For example, privacy. They hardly get, they, they get virtually no privacy at all. Thank you. Um, I will now uh, move on to our own constructive point. Um, yes. Uh, because it is impossible to place a definite value on uh, on occupations, 
it isn't right to say that entertainers are receiving too much money for the work that they do. Uh, the value of an occupation isn't a physical quantity like length, mass, or volume that can be measured and there is no widely recognized standard of measuring uh, the value of an occupation. Furthermore, it would be very difficult, extremely difficult in fact, to create such a standard as the value of an, value of an occupation is subjective. One may consider the services of a lawyer as much more valuable than those of an athlete, while another may think the opposite. Uh, therefore, uh, our side of the house believes that entertainers do not uh, receive too much more, too much money for the work that they do. For arguing that they do receive too much would be an attempt to place a definite value on the work of entertainers. Thank you. Entertainers are paid too much for the work they do because um, when you when you consider the work of an, um, work that entertainers do, um, it is mostly something they like they are <coughs> born with. Like they can they can like either sing really well or dance really well, or they are like kind of talented so that they can entertain people without um, so much difficulty and um, <coughs> um, these entertainers are paid a whole a lot of money um, compared to the workers who um, are burdened physically like for for example the construction workers um, when they work, they suffer a lot. Um, like they sometimes even have to work for innumerable hours out in the sun, and um, they're compared to the what the entertainers um, physically suffer while they're doing it while they work. Um, construction workers um, suffer a lot more, but pay. Um, uh, less. Are paid a lot. Are paid a lot less. Okay. Thank you. Um, I agree with the opposition side uh, because I re I think that um, superstars actually have given up lots of things in their lifetime, such as. As Federal mentioned earlier, their privacy is not kept always, and lots of uh, lots of other stalkers or 
paparazzis, they go after those superstars, and they are really bothered by that. And there are lots of burdens. Who are they? The paparazzi or the uh, star, or so entertainers? Both, both of them damages uh, entertainers' privacy. Oh, uh, and they they have lots of things to deal with because they are fam they are very famous and they are gaining attention from the public very widely. So they have their every behavior is supposed to be very uh, supposed to be suitable for uh, public's favor <coughs> or public's preference. So they have to actually uh, look into themselves every day when they go out into a show or they sing on the stage so that they can make more better impression to sustain those fame. So uh, better? Sustain Can't say more better, can you? <coughs> sustain uh, their images as a good and famous a superstar. So I think that entertainers deserve that much amount of money when they get uh, famous supports from the Thank you. Very good. Thank you, sir. Okay, now Isanu, uh, the final speaker for the opposition. She's going to have a chance to get the final word. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On today's motion, this House believes that entertainers are paid too much for the work they do. The opposition maintains its stance opposing to this motion. And as the final speaker of the opposition, I would like to first point out the major clashes in today's debate, overall summarizing our main points, and then finally go to the reasons why the opposition, not the population, must win, must win today's debate. Now first, there were majorly two clashes in today's, really in today's debate. The first is that, can an absolute value be placed on work? And the second is that, who decides this value on work? On the first, on the first clash, can an absolute value be decided? The proposition incessantly argued, and they tried to place an absolute value, comparing to jobs, other jobs like construction workers and doctors. Their, however, their value, their, their, their arguing on an absolute value was according to their own personal opinion, simply, in 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 one word, biased. They had a narrow opinion toward the, toward the value of entertainment, and they and they and they underestimated the sacrifices that the entertainers must go through such as their privacy and their effort to earn, to, to achieve some kind of skill for entertaining other people. On the other hand, the opposition claimed that no actual value can be proposed on work. And, and when some kind of value is actually, is actually placed on work, it is done by the market, which where the value of work, where the price and the quantity produced is flexible and changeable according to the efficient level. The second, the second clash in today's debate was that who decides this some kind of value? In today's debate, the proposition argued that an individual, an individual with his own opinion, which is very personal, has to decide this value. Uh, <coughs> however, the opposition, on the other hand, argued that argued much more fair solution, which was giving giving the solution by the market's market's invisible hand. The opposition argued at an at an at a at a at a fair point of view that the most appropriate level must be decided to. The most appropriate value for work must be decided according to where the demand and the supply meets. And we argue that the, that the current price of work, the, the current price of entertainment, is according to the high demand and the low supply. And we and our first two speakers supported this very well. And therefore, the opposition believes that the opposition won on both of these clashes. And now I will point out why the proposition has lost the debate, has lost today's debate. The proposition, the proposition in today's, in the beginning of the debate, the proposition had the burden to prove that an absolute value must be placed on work and that this value is significantly and absolutely and universally lower than the one at the equilibrium. However, the proposition failed to give any specific examples or reason or reasoning or comparisons to prove to pr to meet this burden and therefore they have failed they have failed their responsibility. Overall, the proposition had an unclear and biased case. Their arguments were, were simply very personal, which simply insisted that the job of entertainers were, had a least significant, or least significant to compare to other jobs. 
They consistently underestimated the value of entertainment without reasoning and any support. Finally, their third argument was that argued that there was a negative influence on the society failed to address the address today's motion, which is comparing the value of the comparing the wage of the entertainers to the work, the value of their work. However, on the other hand, the proposition, the proposition gave specific examples as well as hypothetical examples and clearly met our burden, which proved that there was no actual value on the on entertainment and that this vague value is determined only at the market, which is the most efficient level. Ladies and gentlemen, the proposition today is not unreasonably claiming that entertainers are earning a small amount of money. Yes, some entertainers earn billions of dollars a day, and this is definitely a large amount. However, what we are proposing is that these, this, this amount of money was earned fair and square by the basic, argument, by the basic principles of the market. And we, the opposition, were not the ones to determine this money, and they, the proposition, were not the ones to determine this money. This was decided by the demand and supply, and we cannot ignore the power of the invisible hand in the market. And that is why the proposition today believes that entertainers are not paid too much for the work they do. Thank you. clear up some arguments of our side and next summarize rebuttals from opposition side and prove why the pro side have won this debate and show the weakness of opponents arguments. First we, um, we believe that some jobs are actually more valuable than others and we have we value uh, jobs differently by expertise. Here uh, the opposition team kind of um, confused with our uh, definition the expertise in this doesn't mean only skill, it means like kind of specialized knowledge and information that people can earn, I mean, obtain by uh, further education. But usually um, these entertainments or entertainers don't go through this education and they have their inherent talents, so they use that in order to bring money. So we pointed out on the, that argument. And um, our second argument is that Entertainers are earning much. Uh, okay, entertainers are earning too much money compared to their social role and intensity of the work they do. And we have compared like various jobs, and then the intense. We prove the intensity of the work they do by uh, comparing superstars and regular entertainers. And they perform similar duties, but they actually are They have huge income gap, and. Our third point was that entertainers are paid too much, and because they have and they have harmful influence on the society, and we we pointed out two things: if the entertainers promote extra vacancy and they promote income equality, and uh, we would like to make some of the uh, final rebuttals of the opposition time side made. Um, the first, we have we have a huge difference in in the part that the opposition team thinks that the absolute value of, of the jobs are only decided in the market where high demands and um, low supply are need. But we believe that um, actually this the market, is, the free market, is actually not perfect, and that um, there they have weakness in the self and. That's why there's policies. If, if the market is perfect and then if everything is efficient, where demand and supply meet, then where, why does the government have policies to adjust, po like taxation or other policies? So we don't believe that market itself decides wage at a fair rate and is efficient. And um, the other, uh, the opposition side also pointed out that the, um, um, uh, entertainers actually sacrifice privacy, but I think that this can't be measurable. So private, like how much are they are their privacy um, like sacrifice? Not really measurable. And information. Yes. So are you admitting that some kind of values cannot be measured exactly by absolute value? 